Good morning. You're tuned in to First United Methodist Church of Terrell, Texas. We're just uh, getting the camera warmed up, and you're welcome to join in and tell your friends that you're tuned in. Uh, this is Pastor Pete. We're at the Parsonage, and you're looking at a, a photo that's on the screen of uh, our nativity scene from our, our living room above the mantle there. So we will be having the message today. It will be about uh, the wise men, and it's called the message is called The Light of Home. And so the uh, scriptures will be Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 through 6, as well as Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. So thank you for joining in early. It's a cold day out there, and I appreciate you being on there. So we'll be starting with uh, some, some uh, prelude music uh, from Dr. Reverend, Reverend Dr. Ron South, and very soon with guitar, as well as vocals of Mary Did You Know. You all feel free to chat online and tell people where you're watching from and say hello. I'm seeing a lot of people that I'm starting to see on there. I think I see Laura Harrison and there's Kathy Caldwell. Good morning. Uh, Laura writes, uh, good morning from East Texas. It's snow flurries out there. Jill's watching from Talty. Jill, thank you for tuning in. I see Shirley Fellers on there. I see a lot of folks that are, that are coming aboard, so, so thank you. Oh, go ahead and get some communion together too. Some some bread and juice or water. Uh, it's, uh, it's it's good. I think even a little wine will be fine today, especially since it's New Year's. So uh, we're delighted to have you uh, coming on board. We'll have Holy Communion starting in just a little bit. Judy Candler, thank you for coming on board. And Rick Townsend and, and Jill Townsend, both from Towson. Good. Morning, Shirley. Let me, let me tell you early people just a little bit of uh, give you a phone number. And that's for Daria. If you have any kind of challenge during this that you want to, to like hearing or, or seeing or, uh, video, audio, or some kind of challenge, call Daria. She's got she's right here in the in the in the room with me, and she's got her phone. And the number, if you're ready, it's four six nine two eight six seven three two five. Diane Bridges, good to have you. Deborah Lambright, thank you for joining. Good morning. Happy New Year to you. This is from New Year's Eve, I mean from Christmas Eve. They had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds, they returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of God for the people of God.
It's so good to see you today. Thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for joining us online. I'm Pastor Pete, as you might have guessed, and we are in the parsonage, and uh, I'm just trying to get it where you can sort of see me there. And we've got quite a crowd online today, and I thank you for joining us online to be together. Uh, good to see UK Squires and uh, all kinds of folks in here that are they're joining on. Diane Bridges, and I see Rose and Tom Snow on there, and Wow, I look, see Laura Harrison from East Texas in the snow, and just uh, a lot of folks. Debbie Thies, glad you're there. We've got just a lot of people. Just go ahead and tell us where you're watching from and, and see what's going on there. Um, and uh, Debbie Thies is kind of our official monitor of the Facebook page, so she's keeping up with that. If there's a challenge there, be sure to let us know. And uh, Daria is here with her telephone, and so she's at 469-286-7325. And you can call her if there's a challenge or some kind of thing we're finding there, so we have some some key worship team members who are out uh, with COVID today, and also we have this sub freezing weather. I mean, it's really really cold outside right now. It's 20 degrees, and and because of that, and plus it's the holiday weekend, we've decided to go ahead and have uh, service strictly online today. So that's why we're here, and so uh, we're, we're right here in the den of the parsonage. And so I'm glad that you could be be part of this. So I trust you can hear and see okay, and I, I want to make sure that that's what we can do to keep things going. Uh, register your attendance online. You can go ahead and go to the church website and scroll down to the left-hand side and be glad to, to get you posted on there to make sure you have that. And then if you have any prayer concerns, you can share those in the in that as well. I'll, I'll receive those uh, on my email to, uh, when I pull it up tomorrow. And if you have... Uh, uh, Anything else that you want to post on there, just let us know. Things that you need, need us to be aware of as a church. Thank you for your financial support of the church and the ministries of First United Methodist. Uh, there are three ways to give. You can, again, put money in the, in the box when we're open. We're just not open today. Uh, but you can also just drop off your check. We will be closed tomorrow. The church office will be closed on Monday for the New Year's Day holiday weekend. But you can come by Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. We'll be glad to receive you there and see you then. You can also uh, mail it in, you know, and you can do the mail a check in. And you can go online. You can go to our website, which is www.fumcterrell.org. And there's, if you scroll down on the right-hand side, there's a big red donate button, and you can go uh, through there as well. You know this. So anyway, like I said, the church office will be closed on Monday, January 3rd for the New Year's Day holiday. Uh, we'll be reopening on Tuesday, January 4th. Now hear this call together from the Psalter. It's page 795 of the Methodist Hymnal. It's out of Psalm 72. I will give you as a light to the nations, my salvation to the ends of the earth. Defend the needy and the poor. Let justice and peace abound. Now we're going to turn. Is there something? Is there a problem? What's that? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Go. So we're going to go on to uh, we're going to go on to a, a song called uh, "We Three Kings." Whoops. Sorry about that. Whoops. Sorry. Twenty twenty two. An office
That's a beautiful song. I'm glad that you could be part of that. I want to read the scripture to you today. Now, this is our scripture from uh, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 through 6, reading to you from the New International Version. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the hip. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all from Sheba will come, bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. Now it's time for our hymn of witness, Rise Up, Shepherds, and Follow. This is by the King's Singers. Oh, for Beautiful. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Now it's time to go to our Lord in prayer. As we look at the manger, as we come together like the shepherds and the wise men, as we come into this time of being connected, may we pray. Lord, we go before you as your children. We too desire to come and see, and see the baby Jesus afresh. As we start this new year of 2022, may we not merely just go through the motions, but may we rise up and follow you. Lord, right now we know there are those who are hurting, and we lift them up in prayer to you. <clears throat> we ask especially for 
prayers for the family and friends of Kay Martin, who passed away on December 28th. Lord, be especially with her son, Bryant, Kay, who is co-founder of Methodist Day School and a longtime Terrell resident. Lord, be with all who knew her, were so close to her, especially our, her good friend, Leanne. Lord, I pray for Doug Spate's brother, Robert, who is dealing with multiple myeloma. Lord, in our, in our congregation, I pray for Randy Boney as he's dealing with COVID. And I pray for all those in his household. I pray for those in our in our worship team who are dealing with COVID right now, Lord, and pray for all of those who are, are facing this. May we, may we grow through this experience, grow closer to each other and closer to you. <clears throat> may we be healed. Lord, I know there are many other prayer concerns. We pray for Donna Williams, who's recovering in Highland Meadows and Rockwall. Lord, we pray for, for Leland Calthorpe, who's dealing with cancer treatments. And Lord, I pray for Lee Holbert, the, uh, the uncle of, of Carolyn Fairley, who is uh, very active. Lee is in Lee Holbert in the celebration of MLK for Terrell. He's dealing with esophageal cancer. Lord, hear these prayers. Finally, Lord, we pray for our country. We pray for us to be able to work together to heal our land. Pray for our president. Pray for our governor. Pray for our mayor. We pray for those working to build a better world. And I pray, dear God, right now, as, as you taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, you're in for a special treat as we're going to hear part of our cantata again. That uh, I want you to be, be part of it. Love made a way. And the song we'll be tuning into is Worship His Glory, <clears throat> Worship the King.
we could listen to that all morning, couldn't we? That was really, really good. It's good to be part of that. So I'm glad that you all could, could be joining us. We've got quite a crowd, probably our largest crowd ever on, as far as online right now, as far as, as far as online worship that's taking place. And so uh, I want us to take time now to read our scripture from the, uh, the gospel message of Matthew. And it's Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. And so if you follow along there, it's, it's good. Hear, hear this word, uh, the visit of the Magi to the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied. For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of God for the people of God. What say you? Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. All right, so who said this? Life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. Hang on a second, let me see something. I think it's cutting in and out, but ours is fine. Okay, okay, hope your sound's good and everything, and thanks for letting us know. I think some are having some challenges, maybe some internet things, and so uh, hopefully you're able to, to, to hear okay. It sounds cutting off and on. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I'll try to get a little closer here to the microphone, make sure you're, you're good as far as that goes. And I'll make sure the volume is turned up all the way. There we go. Maybe that's better there. It's turned up. So who said this? Life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. Well, if you're a Beatles fan, you know that's uh, John Lennon and his song, the, the Son with Yoko Ono. Life is, what's, is, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. But you know, he's not the only one who, who said that. Uh, there was, it was actually written 23 years before, uh, before that time in the Reader's Digest. There was a Reader's Digest article that said that life is what's busy while you're making other plans. And in fact, if there's a book that I read a lot, it's, it's uh, from a writer named Thomas Akempis, who was a monk in, from Germany in the 1400s. And he actually basically said the same thing. Life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. You know, I think with the current situation of how things have gone up and down with COVID variants and Omicron and just the cold weather and, and things taking place, and, and uh, you know, you just realize we can all kind of relate that life is, is what's, uh, what happens when you're busy making other plans. And, you know, you think about this, uh, you know, we were planning this January 2nd to be kind of a kickoff to the new year, a chance to be able to get together and kind of have a rousing worship service. And I think we are having a rousing worship service, but it's strictly out of the den of the parsonage here versus is us being together. But so many of you are tuned in and I appreciate you uh, joining in uh, for that. But you know what, that, that whole phrase, life is what's busy while we're Life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. It can be summed up in a much shorter proverb, a Yiddish proverb, that's only four words, and I think it's, it's appropriate for today. That is, man plans, God laughs. That's kind of where we are today, isn't it? It's, it's kind of there. But as we, as we come into this time of, of discovering what God's got for us to do today, I pray that, you know, especially in this new year, in this year of 2022, that God would open some doors for you. God would open some doors for you and that you would have the courage to walk through them. That's, that's my prayer for you as you make plans for, for this. And I wonder about the wise men. I wonder if they woke up on 
New Year's Day and say, well, maybe this is the year we're going to go follow a star and go to Bethlehem. I doubt it. I think, I think sometimes things happen that are not so planned out, that sometimes you have a, a, a journey or something that's going to take place that, that you need to go on that's important. And it's interesting to think about these uh, these, uh, th these wise men trying to dig in and try to gain more information about who they are because we don't have as much as we like to have. But, you know, there's been different depictions of the wise men. There's even a dis discussion about how many there were, you know. And we always think there were three wise men, weren't they? That's what it has on my nativity scene at the, uh, on the mantle, the fireplace. And, well, no, really what Scripture says is there are three gifts that they brought. There were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But we don't really know if there were... Uh, Three or more or fewer. We're not sure how many wise men there were and where they came from. Now, different movies have been able to show this, and, and some show it as coming kind of from Persia. And there's a movie called The Nativity Story that's really good. It kind of shows some behind-the-scenes type things on this and kind of get a picture of this. And so it shows that there, it shows three wise men, and they're in an observatory uh, studying the stars in, in, uh, in Persia. And they're seeing the alignment of these, what they see as three stars. We now know as three planets that came together. And it's, it's Venus, Mars, and Jupiter all coming together to align themselves. And as they align themselves, it looks like a, a giant star that's coming together. And it was guiding them. And it came at a certain time. That Derry and I saw this same phenomena uh, last year around this time, around Christmas time, as those planets came together to form that we went outside of town and saw it uh, really clearly uh, one, one, uh, one bright, uh, one, one well, really dark night where the stars were really bright as far as that goes. So it was, it's, uh, they, they had studied this. They knew that the, something major was happening in the universe, that this was God coming in human form. And they, they were expecting this. And they were looking forward to it. And so one of the three wise men says to the others, let's go. Let's go find this star. And another second wise man reluctantly agrees to go ahead and go with them. But in the movie version, at least, the third one is highly reluctant. He says, I won't go. He says, I won't go. He goes, this is a foolish trip to take. He goes, it's a great distance. If we would go, it's a great distance. And he goes on to talk about how he has other projects going on. You know, in a sense, we all have other projects going on. We have things we're trying to do to fix up our house or work on our health or do something at, uh, something with our family or some kind of trip or, or there's uh, just some TV show to watch. I mean, there's always something going on. That we have some kind of higher priority. But this first wise man who said very clearly, he goes, let's go. He influenced, influenced his influenced his first wise fellow wise men to go. But the other one was saying, you know, no, I, I won't go. I have too many important things to do to go, to go on this just journey. So the other two kind of tried to persuade him. He wasn't seeming to be interested. And the guy finally says, he says, look, I, I have a special diet I need to be on. And in my special diet, I have special spices that I have to have. And I can't go without my spices. And then they said, and I have, I have comforts. I have to have certain pillows. And I've got to have a certain, I've got to have all my pillows to go with me. Because I, I have to be comfortable. And here's this pillows out there. And, and they said, okay, we'll take an extra camel and let you come. Pack all your pillows and all your spices. We want you to come with us. Maybe God's saying that to you today. I'll pack an extra camel for you or an extra suitcase or give you something to be able to carry all the stuff. But I want you to go on this journey this journey of the year 2022. And so all three wise men go and, and they make the journey. As they're going, you know, it's kind of like one of those things when you have the kids on a trip that say, are we there yet? You know what it is, parents especially, if you're, if you're doing that. But they, they were going along and in the movie, one wise man, the, the leader turns to the other one and says, how many days since we departed on this journey? And he looks at him and he knows the exact answer. He says, 104. And he says, and how many days have you despised this trip? And he says, 105. And he says, hi. He says, well, I'm counting tomorrow. I'm going to despise this also tomorrow. So, so he was uh, finding that he, it, was, it was no fun. It seemed like this ongoing journey. And, you know, some people are just kind of tough to travel with, it seems like. 
But there's always somebody that makes the trip possible. Somebody that says, you know, that has the drive and the initiative to make that trip. I remember trips growing up with my family. We sure didn't go anywhere that far. We never went 104 days or 105 days or anything like that. But I remember it being long enough to go half a day, to go 200 miles to Jill Townsend's hometown of Stamford, Texas, where my father was from as well. And we'd make that 200 mile trip to Stamford. And I still remember that we would be probably saying, are we there yet? Are we there yet? But it was back in the days uh, before seat belts. It was mom and dad in the front seat and the three boys in the back seat getting restless and probably wrestling and poking at each other. And, you know, mom trying to get us to play the game like I spy, like say, does anybody see any, do you see, tell me if you see something that's green or do you, I spy something red or something like that, just to try to take our minds off the trip or you see a license plate from another state or, or things. And so we were playing those games, and, but we were, we were looking forward to getting there. We were looking forward to getting to our destination of Stanford. And so we would stand up in the back seat, and we'd peer out and look forward and see if we could see that water tower. Because that water tower that said Stamford on it, that rusty water tower, that was what we were we were looking for. But the one who was really looking for it the most was my dad. Because it was my dad's hometown. And he was looking forward to getting home and seeing his mother, our granny, to be able to see uh, Mrs. McNabb. And so the journey for him was, was, was joyful. As I read in Isaiah this idea of his heart throbbing as we're going before to seek out this light, that the prophet Isaiah talked about, that light that's going to come before all men, that light that's going to rule the nations, that light that, that we hear the, the message of Christ and saying, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is shining upon you. There was that sense of joy in my father as he was getting to go on this journey and connect his family with his mom, and be able to get there. And finally, we'd see, you know, there'd be like a mirage, a mirage because the sun would be beating down on that highway. And it's so flat going out to West Texas that there's just, I mean, nothing. That's an unbroken prairie. And you see those roads and you see like a reflection. It was, uh, it almost looked like a, like water was on the road, but it wasn't. It was just a uh, something that you'd go through and, and it would disappear when you were there. But we kept on looking at any kind of things, windmills, whatever, to say, where is, where is that water tower? And finally, we'd see it and go, that's it. And we knew we were home. There was a joy. There was the light of home. And the light that we saw was the light in our granny's eyes. We got to come home and come into her house and see that light in her eyes. And I know it just lit up my, my father's eyes as well, his, his heart to be able to be home. And that's maybe something that we're all needing, this sense. And that's why we have this series, this, this Christmas of, of home for Christmas. I hope you have found that home. It's not about actually a physical home so much as it is that spiritual home when you can connect and be there. So we would find that home. So what I want you to do is take out a piece of paper and I want you to look at 2022 coming up. And I want you to make some choices because I believe God gives us free will choices, just like he gave us the free will choice to make those trips to Stanford. And as he gave those wise men the free will choice to make that trip to Bethlehem. As, as those things were going on, Lord, we, we have choices to make too. There, there are people sometimes very reluctantly going on to new directions and some that are very eager to go about and I want you to, to do these three things. These three things are as far as choices go. And the first one is I want you to put yourself in the sandals of the wise men. And I want you to, to, to get those camels ready to go across the desert. And get a piece of paper out. Write down these three things. The first one is I want you to go with, I want you to choose, the first choice I want you to make is to choose joy. To choose joy. You know, maybe the influence of that first wise men on the other two uh, changed them because he had a sense of joy, a sense of, yeah, I know this is going to be long, but it's really important that we go. So the first thing I want you to do in the year of our Lord, 2022, is choose joy. Choose joy. And then the second thing I want you to do is think about the gifts that they brought. They were prepared and they showed up with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The gold was a gift for a king, Jesus would be the king of kings. And the frankincense was 
Incense is what that is. And you may have been in a church that uses incense. We don't really use it in our church, but a church that uses incense was a sense of Jesus, not only the king of kings, he was the high priest of the high priests. And then finally, the third gift was myrrh. And the myrrh was to, to foreshadow that he would die. He would die for his people. And it, the myrrh was for burial purposes. So three somewhat unlikely gifts when you think about it for a baby, but nothing more fitting than gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You see, I believe these three wise men were very generous. And so I want you in the year of our Lord, 2022, to choose generosity. Choose to be generous. And I'm not just talking about with your checkbook. Although that's something that I believe your finances need to be, something that you can be generous in your giving. I want you to also be generous with your time because that's really who you are. And as the wise men were generous with their time to be able to, to give of their time, those many days, weeks, or months even, to devote to serving God, and these were not even Jewish people. These were, they came from a different faith. They were called Zoroastrian priests from a different country, from Persia. But it shows that God is God of all. And God was there to be able to persuade and encourage them and put them to work for God's purposes to point them to this point in time to the Messiah who would save all the earth. So in the year of our Lord, 2022, Choose generosity. Finally, the third one I want you to jot down is something to do with, with using God's, the, the brain that God's given you. Not just the brain for intelligence, but the wisdom that God gave you. Because as you remember, they had, they had uh, paid attention and they learned the culture of what was taking place. And the, the wise men had come into Jerusalem and they had asked people, where is this one who's going to be born king of the Jews. And it caused quite a stir, quite a stir. And in that stir, what happened is there was uh, a lot of, the word got to, uh, the, the, the word got to King Herod. The word got to King Herod that there was somebody coming out, a coming up king. And that made King Herod very nervous. So he brought the wise men to the palace. And there he spoke with them and fed them and entertained them and said, when you find this king, this baby, Come tell me so I can go and worship him too. But you know, the rest of us know, that's not what King Herod was going to do. He was going to actually end up killing all the baby boys under the age of two just to try to get to this Jesus who was a threat to him. And so they were warned in a dream, the wise men, and they chose, made a choice. Again, those choices that we made, they made the choice to go back another way. And so my prayer for you in the year, year of our Lord, 2022, is that you would choose wisdom. Choose wisdom in a world that seemingly has gone crazy. Choose wisdom. So those are the three choices that I have for you. You know, when, you, when you're busy making other plans, life is going to happen in the year 2022. And when it does... I pray that we learn a lesson from the wise men about choices. And this year, 2022, I pray that first of all, you will choose joy. Secondly, you will choose generosity. And third, you will choose wisdom. It's now time for Holy Communion. And so as we prepare our Holy Communion, Darius is going to bring our Holy Communion over to my table here where I am. And I've got page 12 in the hymnal. If you've got a hymnal at home, or you may know the, the wording as it is already anyway. But I'll turn to that. And uh, as we depart, by the way, we have, we have bulletins. And you may have gotten one by email today. Uh, if you if you need one, I can email you. If you did want to send me a text, I'll email you another one. Also, we have plenty of printed bulletins, so come by Tuesday or Wednesday and pick up your copy, including all the the joys and concerns that are listed there as well. So uh, I'm going to try to get to this, and we'll put this on here. And as we prepare Holy Communion.
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us, let us confess our sin before God and one another together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name, in the name of, Jesus of Jesus Christ, Christ you, are you are forgiven. forgiven. Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Page 13. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is it right. right to give our thanks and praise. It is right, a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes, comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the highest. highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So now, if you're at home, I pray that you have some bread and some juice. And so I take this bread and I just give this to Daria and say, Daria, the body of Christ broken for you. Daria, the cup of salvation poured out for you. Reagan, the body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ poured out for you. He, body of Christ, broken for you. He, the blood of Christ, shed for you. Thanks be to God. Go forth in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. It's now time for our hymn of invitation, this Angels from the Realms of Glory, hymn number 220. I thank you so much for being part of our worship service today. Feel free to share this with, with others.
angels from the realms of glory. this place. Go forth making choices. Go forth choosing joy. Go forth choosing generosity. And go forth choosing wisdom. God bless you and have a wonderful week.